two high profile figures are mulling presidential runs. This is interesting. So Sunday, Michigan Congressman Justin Amash, the former GOP member who is now very newly an independent and who has said that he supports impeachment proceedings. Well, yesterday he weighed in on a possible presidential bid. I still wouldn't rule anything like that out. Um, I believe that I have to use my skills, my uh, public influence where it uh, serves the country best. And I believe I have to defend the Constitution which, in whichever way works best. And if that means doing something else, then I do that. But uh, I feel uh, confident about running in my district. Meanwhile, billionaire Democratic donor Tom Steyer told staffers that he is launching a 2020 campaign with a formal announcement coming tomorrow. Steyer had floated a possible run back in January, only to announce in Iowa that he was not running. But of course, the, one of the biggest stories in Washington is Robert Mueller's testimony next week. Lawmakers have been considered potential lines of inquiry, even though the former special counsel says he will not discuss anything that isn't mentioned in his 400-page report. Here to weigh in on the likelihood of those two presidential bids and Robert Mueller's testimony is Squat Scott Dworkin. He's co-founder and lead investigator of the Democratic Coalition. Scott is also the series editor of Meet the Candidates 2020, a series of books providing background on each contender in the 2020 primary. Welcome, Scott. Thanks. Thanks well, for having me. So, Great Scott, idea. sounds like you're going to have to uh, update your, your dossiers yeah, you, there. You've got some uh, more on, work on to some do, new buddy. Candidates. <laughs> what, what, is your, what are your thoughts right now on the state of the race when, and how things have, have shaken out? And is Tom Steyer actually going to be able to do anything? Stop. Yeah. Stop, stop with the candidates announcing. Stop. <laughs> we thought we were through Some of them need to run for Senate. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we're not going to do books on everybody. We're going to do it on people who have the potential to win. Mm -hmm. As of now, those are six candidates. Okay. Uh, and, and so I don't see. Amash coming into it, all he's doing would be helping Trump. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't see why he would want to so actually do that. You see him as kind of like a Howard Schultz, where you, you think Amash would actually take more from Democrats than from Republicans. Absolutely. Yeah, because of yeah. his impeachment support, and he'd be like that conservative, but not really. Like, he, he can have that muddy ground. And also, it's not... I don't even know if he'd be able to be on the ballot in all states. Like, it's just a wasted run, wasted effort. Focus on your district. Stay where you're at mm -hmm. uh, and focus on getting reelected as a congressman. Well, it doesn't even sound like he's going to be able to <laughs> win in his own <laughs> right, district. Right. I actually was looking into this. Apparently, in Michigan, it's very difficult to run as an independent. Oh, so, really? Yeah, he's all but toast. I mean, it's possible, but it's... It, it's very unlikely. So meaning he probably will run for president. Yeah. I mean, what else it, is he going to do? It, it would be better for him to run right. for president, probably from a He's got a better shot. Yeah, he'll get a nice cable news contract afterwards. <laughs> but I, I, think the real, I think the real question, Scott, is with the state of the Democratic race, we just say Congressman Delaney on here, it seems mm -hmm. to be like a big fight between progressives and the neoliberal establishment. How do you see that uh, playing out going forward? I, I mean, yeah. you, I think you'll see people with... Uh, maybe on the far left, like myself, mm -hmm. or whatever you want to define it as, um, we're going to start to realize, again, that America as a whole is not just us. And so we've got to be more broad and, again, to the center of our issues so that we can win. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, liberals will uh, agree with the fact that we need to win. And that is that needs to be a focus, but we cannot compromise our values when doing so, and we can't play it safe. If we play it safe and we put someone as a nominee because we're like, if we have this guy or a woman at the top of the ticket, then we're definitely going to win. That is not going to work. We got to have someone we're passionate about that people are going to turn out for, somebody that we can believe in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is this is something where there's a lot of people right now that are bringing books to like a Twitter war. And the, you can't do that. So we're going to yeah. have to sum it down. And there's got to be someone who hits hard. Right now, the hardest hitting candidate has been Harris. Yeah. Close second is Warren. Mm. Uh, and, and so we, we need someone who can do the jabs, the one-liners, the, the person who can come back and, and overcome Trump because we've got to work against propaganda. Uh, we got to work against the White House, the DOJ, and you know every part of the administration. So this is not a small hill to climb. We're mm. going to need all these candidates to eventually band together and be behind one candidate, obviously. Yeah. I, I think, again, it's going to be one of the top top six uh, that we had written about. I mean, it's interesting what you're saying, and I think this is not brought out enough, that we are going to see tactics in this race that we've never seen before. I mean, the, the Trump team is not going to play by the rules, right? And you can call that cheating, or you could call it, right, expanding the playbook, or however you want to euphemize it. But 
what kinds of like you look at this stuff you look at what's coming to the forefront in the online arena the kind of mm -hmm. new tools and tricks and techniques that people are using like what are we in for here uh, the, right now we have a lot of people that we've been uh, exposing as part of the resistance movement that are not part of the resistance movement. They're a mix of foreign adversaries that have set up accounts to kind of get on the inside. So we're going to have people who come in and we found some accounts that, you know, say, oh, Pelosi needs to resign, like things like that that are re absolutely absurd and ridiculous. Like mm -hmm. the person who is right now leading our party uh, and, and helping us to kind of stay together. We don't want to just bash her at a constant, but they a lot of people will take the bait and we realize they're going to do everything they can to provoke, divide us, uh, and it's not even real people a lot of times. And so we need to recognize uh, that we can't have knee-jerk reactions. We need to be make sure that we have a real analysis of the situation. At the same time, we need to also have catchphrases and be able to trend hashtags on a daily basis and push back and realize that online is the way to go. If we do not invest online, we will lose. And what do you say to people? Because this, I mean, now, like, anytime you post something on Twitter that one group of people doesn't like, they're like, Twitter's not real life, right? right? Like, that's the new refrain, is right. if you see something on Twitter you don't like, even though you are also on Twitter, you're like, it's not real life. I mean, what do you say to that? Does Twitter actually matter? Yeah, it does. I, I think that everything that you do matters. Speaking out, uh, supporting someone, uh, it, it goes and it, it goes from Twitter to real life. Because when I tweet something out where it's like, okay, let's trend this hashtag, uh -huh. let's say impeach Trump, and then what we'll do is we'll activate people to then send letters to Congress to impeach Trump, and then we'll have them do phone calls to impeach Trump, and then we'll have them take meetings to impeach Trump, go to town halls, and then, so it turns to that in-person action. That is the biggest spark you can give them, is via Twitter and Facebook and, and social media networks. That is, and I think we have to realize, we have to stop taking it for granted that social media is the future of politics as of right now. Now, we don't want a president that's just a Twitter president, um, but in order to beat this one, we're gonna need someone who is able to defeat him online. Well, one last thing on this before we go to Mueller, which is, you know, we saw Speaker Pelosi basically take a shot at AOC over the weekend mm -hmm. saying that ultimately only her and some of the prog other progressives, there are only four votes even though they have their whatever or their Twitter following. That seems pretty in direct contrast to what you're talking about here and to really the younger branch of the party. Do you think it was appropriate for her to take a shot at, at AOC like that? No, yeah. but I, I think, you know, the, there's, there's also the, I think she's pretty smart, the speaker, and mm -hmm. she knows what the reaction would be. And I think right now, after July 4th, people kind of need to be prodded to get back into the impeachment mode of things, especially with Mueller's testimony coming up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so far I have, uh, I think it's 17 members of Congress that plan to, uh, based on Mueller's appearance, probably announce their impeachment intentions. So we'll be close to 100 okay. at that at that point. So I, I don't think that I don't think much is going to change because of this jab. But it it definitely was not uh, strategically something that I would do. I don't think that um, attacking you know progressive leaders online is the way to go. But at the same time. You know, it really lights people's fire, mm -hmm. and it gets them kind of, kind of going. So, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's good or bad. I, I wish that we were all kind of on the same page with this. Obviously, Speaker Pelosi appreciates uh, online because she is one of the biggest leaders online mm -hmm. uh, for the party. Uh, AOC has more interactions on a daily basis on Twitter, um, but you know, we don't. As a party, we don't want to take that for granted. And as a person who basically runs the online community for Democrats, uh. um, I, I would say Twitter is going to be essential to campaigning. Yeah. And anyone who takes that for granted um, is going to be on the losing side, probably. What do you think we're going to see in the smaller test? I mean, do you think that this is going to change any minds? Do you think this is going to give momentum to the impeachment um, desires of the Democratic caucus? Absolutely. So I think this is another one of those, we, we brought a book to a Twitter fight where we had the Mueller report and him just reading the summaries. They're gonna be able to piece out that visual. It's gonna be theatrics, but it's not fake. As in like, it's not, uh, it's, it's, not it's not something where they are trying, to, trying too hard to do it. I think what, what's gonna happen is we'll be defending Robert Mueller in the days coming, reminding people who he is, where he's from, being a vet and uh, 
um, you know, how he's an honorable person and they'll be trashing him as much as they possibly can. And that's going to backfire, right. I think, because his testimony will be so serious and he can trounce any lawmaker that's out there. Do you wish the Democratic candidates, and this kind of brings us back to Tom Steyer. I mean, Steyer is like, we got impeached. He's put up the ads. He's been on it for a long time now. I'm sure that's going to be part of his message mm -hmm. if he does, in fact, run for president, which he looks like he is. Do you wish that more Democrats were on the stage aggressively making the case against Trump because he was fairly absent from the Democratic debate stage. I think they did that thing where don't talk about him because we want to focus on this. So they uh -huh. probably got guidance from the party. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the only thing I could think of is they saw polling where it's like, well, we don't want to talk about Trump. Don't just talk about Trump. Then the second night we saw him talked about a lot more and yeah. people actually went after him because people were dis disappointed that he wasn't hit as hard. Uh -huh. I think that they got to realize it's not just about what we stand for and what we do. Again, it, we have to make hard hitting statements that go straight at him and that he has to defend himself from. We can't just act like uh, it's going to be something where we can explain an issue uh, and you know, 30 seconds later we lost the listener. Yeah, well, very interesting, Scott. Thank you so much. Great Thank to see you. you, sir. Thank you. As the president considers an executive action to include that citizenship question on the 2020 census. How would that work legally? Former federal prosecutor Joe Moreno weighs in when rising returns.